Bruchem Aboim. Again, welcome everyone to our home. Again, thank you for attending. Again, we are in the middle of a uh, series on the Shimon Esrei, on the Amida. Again, that's said uh, every day, three times a day, every 365 days of the year. So we are now up to the um, fifth lecture on this series. So this week on my thoughts, we would like to continue our in-depth discussion in-depth in discussion of the Amida with the uh, fourth blessing. Now this prayer, this prayer introduces the 13 personal requests, the first of which begins with the request for knowledge. The Jerusalem Talmud in the Tractate of Brachot tells us that if there is no intellect, there can be no discernment and or separation. The only reason my man was given intellect, was to be able to recognize and appreciate that there is a God in the world and that we should serve him with both love and awe. In this week's Amida, pardon me, in the weekday Amida, the standing prayer that we recite three times daily other than on the Shabbat or holidays, there are 13 personal requests that we present before God Almighty. The first of these prayers opens with the words ata chonein la adam das that you bestow upon man knowledge even before we request any blessing from god almighty our father in heaven we first and foremost ask him to bestow upon us knowledge you know the animal kingdom is superior to mankind in so many ways animals are generally stronger and faster than man they have a keener sense of sight and their sense of smell is essential for their survival. So what makes mankind the most powerful force in creation? It's our intellect, which is essential for us not only to survive, but even more so for us to flourish and to dominate our world. The Tour in Orachayim writes, since man's supremacy over animals lies in his capacity for insight and perception, the blessing of Atachone was established by as the first of the 13 personal requests in the Amida prayer, since without insight, there can be no true prayer. The Seder Hayom stated that it is critical for one to concentrate on this blessing properly, for it is the primary request that one asks from his creator, which is the ability to be able to differentiate between right and wrong and good and evil. As it states in Mishle and Proverbs, the awe of heaven is the beginning of knowledge. The Talmud in the Tractate of Nadarim states that if one acquires wisdom, then what does he lack? But if he does not acquire this wisdom, well, then what has he acquired? The Talmud is teaching us the one who has acquired wisdom has in reality acquired everything. The verses in the portion of Kisavo in the admonition state, since you did not serve the Lord your God when everything was abundant, you will serve your enemies without anything. Rav Nachman explained that the words without anything means that you will be without wisdom. Abaya said, we have a tradition that there is no truly destitute person except for he who is impoverished of wisdom. The Sefer Netzer Achayim relates that Ramosha Kosovar once said to his followers, you know, some people believe that they must storm the heavens, meaning pray with tremendous passion only when they recite the prayers of Usanik Tokev, which is a, a special prayer that we offer up to God Almighty on both the holidays of Rosh Hashanah and on Yom Kippur. However, they fail to realize that they must storm the heavens every day of the year, especially when they recite the blessing of Atochonen in their weekday Amida. On another occasion, he expressed the idea just a little bit differently. He said, when one is having trouble concentrating in the Amida, he should at the very least focus on the blessing of Atochonen. Now Rashi writes a comment in the Talmud, in the Tractate of Avodah Zorah, that states if one finds that they are forgetting their learning, what should they do? What they should do is they should spend extra time on reciting the blessing of Atochone. Rabbi Yeshua Karolitz, 
Arelitz, I mean, known as the Chazon Ish, was a prominent rabbi and halakhic authority of the 20th century. After his passing, his brother, with Mayor Karelitz, was asked, what made the Chazon Ish who he was? He responded, it is clear among our family mem members that he was able to reach the heights that he did because of his particular co concentration when he recited the words in the Amida of Chanenu Me Itucha, which translates to mean grant us from yourself found in the prayer of Atuchone. He requested that God's presence should always reside within him. And God fulfilled his request. This prayer is unique among all the other 12 requests found in the Amida. The other prayers begin with a request and then end with a praise. This prayer, however, follows the same formula that the men of the Great Assembly instituted for the Amida prayer itself. The first three prayers of the Amida are words of praise to God Almighty. The next 13 prayers are personal requests and the last three prayers express our thanks and gratitude to God Almighty, our benevolent Father in heaven. The prayer opens with the words with words of praise. The blessing begins with the Hebrew word ata, which means you. This is the only one of the personal requests that begins with the word you, a word that expresses the close and direct relationship that we all share with God, our Father in heaven. The prayer continues with the words chonen la adam das, that you graciously bestow knowledge on man. What I find interesting is that the blessing of chonen hadas begins with das, knowledge rather, than with chokma, with wisdom. You know, Dallas das knowledge is something that we have supposedly earned through our own through our own efforts. It is defined as facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through their experience or education. That is in contrast to the chokma, chokma wisdom which we receive is solely a gift from our benevolent Father in heaven. In addition, there are four Hebrew names that are used in reference to man. They are listed in order of prestige, first being Adam, then Ish, Geber, and Enosh. In this prayer, knowledge is connected with the name Adam, the most elevated name of man, since it connects to an individual who has persevered and has accumulated information. The blessing uses the word chonein, which is derived from the Hebrew word chinon, which means free, a gift. This is in contrast to something that you have earned. This word seems to really contradict our understanding of the word dot, knowledge. We learn a great lesson from these words. One might erroneously believe that all knowledge that they have accumulated in their lifetime is only due to their own efforts. But the blessing is telling us that even though knowledge is defined as that which a person has, a, has acquired as a result of their own active participation, we still need to know that it too is a gift from God Almighty, our benevolent Father in heaven. The next phrase in the blessing includes the lowest name of man, Enosh. The verse reads, Umalamit Enosh Bina, which translates to mean, and you teach mortals understanding. God Almighty is interested and concerned about all of his children, regardless of their mental aptitude. In fact, the more that we need, the more that God Almighty wants to give us. God Almighty becomes the ultimate teacher, especially to those individuals who need it the most. The person who possesses the least amount of intelligence requires a teacher with the greatest amount of patience and intellect. We then beseech God our Father in heaven a request to a request to Hanenu me itacha, bestow upon us from your intellect. You know, one of the traits that a child inherits from their parents is their IQ. The Torah tells us Bahalakta Bidirachov, and that we should go in his ways. Our mission in life is to emulate God Almighty, our Father in heaven. We request that he bestow upon us not, not just intellect, but a godly intellect, that which is a reflection of God, our Father in heaven, and his values. The prayer continues with the word chokmah, bina, vodat, 
a request for wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. The first letter of these three words forms an acronym for the word Chabad, which stands for Chokhmah, wisdom, Bina, understanding, and Da'at, knowledge. Now the word Chokhmah, wisdom, can be broken up into two Hebrew words. They are Koach and Ma, loosely translated as a seminal flash, an idea. Where does an idea come from? It is perceived as a divine inspiration, a gift, directly from God Almighty, our benevolent Father in Heaven. Bina is seen as understanding. You know, once an idea has entered your mind, now you begin to work on constructing a deeper understanding of all of its benefits and usages. The word is derived from the Hebrew word bone, which means to build. Dot is translated as knowledge, the culmination of information that you have learned from your experiences, what we refer to as first-hand knowledge. There is also knowledge, though, that you have attained from books and or heard from other sources. So the proper order should have been and is Chokhmah, wisdom, then Bina, understanding, and then Das, knowledge. Now, the blessing ends with the words, words of gratitude. Blessed are you, O Lord, who chonen hadas, who graciously bestows knowledge. We see that the prayer begins and ends with the same words, chonen hadas, bestow upon us knowledge. This repetition teaches us that everything, everything in life begins and ends with intellect. There is a prayer that we offer up to God Almighty on the holiday of Yom Kippur, in which we recite 44 verses. Each of the verses begin with the same Hebrew words, that are translated, that are al said are al chait. These words are translated as and for the sins that we have transgressed with. While we are reciting each verse, we beat our chest as a sign of contrition. Now the Hebrew alphabet is comprised of 22 letters, so 44 verses is twice the number of verses that make up the Hebrew alphabet. With these verses, we express 44 different sins that we may well have transgressed throughout the previous year. What I find interesting is that one of the 44 verses states, and for all the sins that I have transgressed with my Yetzahara, my evil inclination. So what are the other 43 sins attributed to? Aren't all sins that we transgress connected in some way or another to our evil inclination? The answer is no. There are 43 sins, the other 40 sins are due to the influence of our Yetzirah Tov, our good inclination. We did a mitzvah, a good deed, huh? but we chose to do the wrong one. This is why we need intellect to ins assist us in making the proper choice at the proper time. Since there are occasions when what we perceive as a mitzvah was in reality a sin, an avera, a transgression like any other. You know, they tell a story of Rebbe Leo of Vilna, known as the Gra, and his illustrious student, Reb Chaim of Elushin, the granddaddy of the yeshiva movement. One day, Reb Chaim and the Gra were, were talking, and Reb Chaim suggested to the Gra that the times necessitate that they groom young men to become leaders of the future generation. The Gra listened, and he told Reb Chaim to forget about the idea. About a year later, the two were talking, Reb Chaim just casually mentioned the idea of a yeshiva movement in passing to the Gra. To his surprise, the Gra turned to Reb Chaim with a smile and said, you know, that sounds like a great idea, you should do it. Reb Chaim was a bit confused. He said to the Gra, with all due respect, Rebbe, I made the exact same suggestion a year ago, and you dismissed it. What changed? The Gra answered him, when you first mentioned the idea, you were full of passion, and I couldn't decide whether it came from the side of good or from the side of evil. But now that I see the time has passed and that you are less passionate, well, I see that it comes from the side of good and that you should now proceed with your plans. Another interesting fact related to this prayer is that there are 67 letters that make up this first request. If you were to add the blessing itself, the, uh, to the number of letters, then the number is 68. 
The number 68 is the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word chayim, which means life. The only way for a person to live life that has purpose and meaning is by utilizing their intellect to connect to God Almighty, their benevolent Father in Heaven. However, if we misuse our intellect, if we don't find a way to connect our minds to our Father in Heaven, the end result may well be that our intellect will be that that leads us down a road of godlessness and destruction. As we witness in our world today, especially with the intellectual elite, such as the academics, scientists, and doctors. As we have become less religious, well, the world has become more and more dangerous place to live. Think of it as nuclear power. If we use it properly, it is an immense benefit to the world. However, if we use it improperly, that it has the power to destroy the world and all of us that live in it. In the last paragraph of the Shema Yisrael, it states that you should not go after your heart or your eyes, after which you go astray. Rashi, in the portion of Shalach, commenting on these words, states that the heart and the eyes are the spies of the body. They are the agents for it to sin. The eye sees and the heart desires. Then the body, the person, commits the sin. This is based on a Tanchuma. The Toldus Ephraim said that the Tanchuma should have stated that the heart desires and then the eye sees, just like it's stated in the Torah. Why did he change the order? He said that somehow, if the heart doesn't desire, well, then the eye doesn't see. What we learn is that if we use our intellect properly, then we have the ability to overcome our evil desires and our self-centered emotions. So let us all pray to God Almighty, our Father in Heaven, that he should bless all us all that we should utilize the gift of intellect properly. May he open our minds and our eyes so that we can identify and gain a true and just understanding of the wisdom and deep love and affection that God Almighty extends to each one of us personally. Let us do so in the hope that we can learn to emulate all of his positive traits such as love and kindness and in the process become more godly individuals. Let us all pray that God brings a swift end to the war in Gaza with a decisive victory over Hamas and all the evil in the world. May he return home all the hostages safely, cure the sick and injured, comfort the mourners, and bring home all of our brave IDF soldiers safely, with Mashiach Zakano leading the way quickly and in our time, and let it be now. Again, let me thank you for listening. Again, I hope you found this all interesting and informative. Again, God should bless you with health, wealth, safety, uh, all with only good. Please, if you remember, push the subscribe, subscribe button, the like button, and if you please share with your friends. They may find it interesting. Again, thank you for attending. Shabbat Shalom.